This video is sponsored by Dwight Street Book Club. Next week is the trial episode. Who will I become once I watch it? Why must we be reminded that those we love can pass through our hands like grains of sand or chunky pieces of gravel? Perhaps I'll look back on this as a walk to remember that Mandy Moore movie where she had cancer and died. Oh God, why? Why must the things that are most beautiful in life cause the most pain? Will I be swallowed whole by the darkness? Or is there hope that I might emerge through the other side into enlightenment? Why? I'm weak, okay? Weak! Okay, oh, 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 okay, oh, okay. Oh. <coughs> ow, ooh, ow, 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 oh, my hair, my hair, ow, <coughs> ow, ow, oh. <coughs> ow, oh, that hurt, that hurt. Oh, my sister's dress, oh, oh, she's gonna kill me. Uh, hi. Yes, um, I'd like to book a consultation for a dress repair, please. Yeah, it's urgent. Thank you. Well, hello there, Miss Duran. I hear you're the lady to speak to about mending a dress? Uh, oui, bon, oui, yes. Excellent. Let me get it. So... Here's a dress you can tell the front. It didn't really get a whole lot of damage. Um, the back, however, got a little bit. It's minimal, I assure you. Um, so just let me know if you think this, is that workable for you? Well, I would say who looks at the back? Uh, well, my sister, and she's <laughs> the one who owns this dress. I kind of stole it from her. And she oh. doesn't know that I took it, so, you know. Oh, uh... Yeah, so it's really important that she can't tell any damage was done. Do you think that's... Do you think that's that's achievable here? Yeah, definitely. Everything is achievable. Okay, yeah. If you, if you dream big enough, anything is achievable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, um... We'll just take in that and throw it over. It'll be perfect. It'll be fine. Don't worry yourself. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'll I'll send this to you uh ASAP. Thank do you, you take do you take payment in the form of uh paintings? <laughs> that would be interesting. I've never done those before. It depends on the painting though. Okay, I, I do some really good paintings. You can ask Asad. Before we get into the interview, I do also have to thank you as well for being one of the very few cast or crew members to be somewhat socially active on social media because honestly but like you and kp and sometimes eric were like the only things that got us through the drought of <laughs> season two filming so i just want to express my gratitude uh on behalf of all the fans i see you out here talking to fans for helping us just like deepen our insanity about this show so thank you very very much roxanne well, thank you to Bits. I mean, I think I've I've never met so many, not met, but cyber met so many people that were so utterly kind and, and the reactions are just really, really ecstatic and and we're just a bunch of very, very nice vampire community and it just blew my mind when I kind of tipped in and I was like, what are they saying? And they respond back and I think them. The whole system of Twitter for me is working out really, really nicely because you actually get to talk and it's not just emojis like on Instagram where it's like, yeah. like or beautiful, or whatever it is. It's like going into deeper stuff. And, and I love all of your commitment. And I've been having a lot of very nice times on Twitter, to be honest with you. So I'm I gotta so glad. Oh. I'm so glad because sometimes Twitter can be like not so nice, but I'm glad that you're having a wonderful experience with it. <laughs> You guys, no, honestly, it's it's really it's really getting different. So, first question for you: um, When you first introduce yourself to somebody new, 
how long would you say it normally takes them to start singing the police's Roxanne to you? You know what? I just, people don't dare anymore. They're like, I know on set it's really funny when, I know, right? When I, I kind of when I was younger, like a kid, people were like singing it off, off tune and I would be really, really happy. It makes me really, really happy. I wasn't named after Roxanne Police, which I would have loved mm -hmm. to. Um, but I think it was a bit too um, intense for my parents to name me after a prostitute, which, which is I, the case. You know, bringing a nice newborn baby into the world and being like, <laughs> yes, I know just the name for you. <laughs> yeah, they chose, uh, they made the choice of naming me after the film um, and uh, the book Cyrano de Bergerac and it's this huge love story. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Roxanne. Okay, so obviously I'm here to like crack open the episode and the character of Madeleine. But first, I mean, there's not enough information out there about you, Roxanne. So I want to crack you open a little bit. So we're going to do a lightning round of questions here where you don't think, just answer, okay? Okay. First thing that comes to mind. Okay. I can see you're getting into the <laughs> first question. Yeah. What is your favorite movie? Uh, Brazil. Brazil. Oh, okay. She's fancy. It's just, it's one of those movies that I watched and I was just howling. And I was like, I don't want it to stop. <laughs> and it was just, I think it's first reach in me somehow. I remember watching, I think the first movie that I intentionally remember is Forrest Gump, and I remember it pained me so much that I could I couldn't get out of the movie. And I remember my parents were sitting on the couch with me, and they're like, "It's fine, it's just the movie." And I was like, <laughs> it's not <laughs> just a movie. I just witnessed such heartbreak. <laughs> like it was this sort of immersion in things, and I also have that when I read books or when I go see plays. It's just I just dive into it and sometimes I come at the end of the movie or the series or whatever it is and I'm like please don't stop so that's that's it what is your go-to late night snack oh bugger gosh um five um, four three peanut two. butter things they're really really good it's like not even peanut butter it's like almond it's like nutella but not nutella Yummy. Do you like go through a whole jar in one sitting? Almost. I try to like do it in three settings to feel a bit less bad about myself, but I always have to combine it with something. May it be like, I don't know, sticks or, or whatever comes around. Mm, yeah. Okay. What is the best song to scream in a car on a dark, lonely highway at night? I think Taylor Swift, anything from Taylor Swift. Anything from Taylor Swift. I mean, number one for me would probably be style. That one. God, I think the one that I really I fell in love on 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 songs with 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 her, and I think it was "Shake It Off," "Shake It Off." Was just "Shake It Off." <laughs> yeah, that would be it. If you had the opportunity to kill someone, but they respond the very next day with no memory of it, and you were never held accountable for the crime, would you do it? Uh, but, um, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Balance That's blood is too intense for me I'm really sorry and I don't really have murder instincts in me not yet maybe it's gonna blossom at some point no I'm fine for now thank you okay that's good to know you know also too I'm sure your PR person or whoever is like sitting there like thank god that was the right answer <laughs> had she said yes we would have had to pull this interview immediately <laughs> not be seeing me at all there would have been a huge technical problem <laughs> Last question. Do you believe in life after love? Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Literally. Yeah, yeah. And love yeah. after love. Yes. Yes. Yes, exactly. We got to have, we got to have share to keep us going in the world. Well, I mean, you know, life and love just go together. I don't imagine it any other way. It would be sad, you know, if you had this big, amazing love or, I don't know. Imagine you have it at 16 or you have it at 60 and the entire life is like kind of loveless. It would be dreadful. Yeah. Wow. Poetry. Okay. So getting into the show and everything like that, I have to ask you like the stereotypical question that everybody who's on the show gets asked. 
were you familiar with, you know, the book or the movie or the show itself before you auditioned for this role? So I, to be honest with you, I never really watched the movie. I had a knowledge of it. And uh, when I auditioned, I, I binged through the first season and I rewatched. I didn't rewatch the movie at that time because I was like, I really don't want to get them confused. Yeah. And as soon as I had the green light, I was like, I binged everything that I could. I rewatched season one. I uh, loved it even more because it was not in a context where it had to be me understanding everything. It was just me enjoying the whole. I mean, you watch Jacob and Sam act and you're like, it's brilliant. It's just, it's so much fun. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's and fireworks. <laughs> all the time and they never stop. And then you're like, you know, I really like the first season. But when I read the second season, I was like, wow, that is taking it to a whole new level. And it was just, it's so interesting to see the evolutions and see how production really puts so much money and time and effort into it. And and, and it's brilliant. It's really, really interesting. And so I also watched the film. I read the two first books and I'm really looking forward to what's actually after us, the third and the fourth season. Oh, I'm so excited. I've mm -hmm. like every little like tease that we get to the future I feel like I, I have like jet engines on my legs and I like just rock it off into space <laughs> I get so excited <laughs> so when you were like reading through the script did you have like a favorite scene or something that you were like so looking forward to either shooting with your character or even just seeing that wasn't even involved with you to see play out on screen I'm quite bad at like visualizing anything uh, when I read. So I'm like, it's, it's, I feel like a bit, you know, just cut from any sensation. And I, I always imagine scenes in a certain way. And then I come on set and I'm like, of course, no, we're going to show it that way. And then you come into the settings. And I like how everything just becomes real when I see it. Mm -hmm. uh, I never watch anything that I shoot until it's it's completely done. Um, and I was really, really, really excited. And when I watched it, I was like, wow, it's, it's bang on. It's really, really good. And it's just the whole work, every layer from the costumes to the makeup artists, to the hair artists, to, um, you know, creating the sets. I mean, yeah. Laura is is breathtaking i mean i came he's into, amazing i've never met anyone like that they're gonna hate me but yeah it's just she's just she, she asked me if i had books that i wanted in my shelf in my room and i just melted and i was like yeah so still on the back of the first one in just so you know oh um well she yeah you know that you have to has to somehow i'm gonna be in there it's not it's not yeah, it was. This was just for fun, and then I had a couple of books, and it was really, really interesting to go for me as well to go back in time and be like, "Oh, these are really interesting French books," but I can I can read the ones that were published before forty four. So it's also mm -hmm. for me the process of of creating and of of thinking in a different way. And I remember going into Madeleine's atelier the first time and. I didn't have to act, to be honest with you. I was depressed as hell and I was just dragging along and I was like, she's so good, Mara's just so good. She's so good. I think I just blabbered that for like 10 minutes going around. <laughs> it was just, it's so incredible. And she did like, there's a little corridor and then you see um, my bedroom, but there's also a kitchen and bathroom. No. And I know, and it was never bloody shot, and it was just incredible. You had these, and she put so much love and effort into every single detail, and it's, I mean, if that's not passion, then I don't know, but I was in Right? Love. Yeah, I mean, so I was so fortunate to be able to get to talk to Mara about, you know, her process and everything like that, and that was one thing that I thought was just so, uh, like you said, such a... Um, example of passion is you know she was talking about with like the teatre how they have the murals on the ceiling and it's like ne you never see it but her whole idea was if it does the work of putting the actors you know in that mindset and in that frame of mind then it doesn't matter if it's not seen if it's doing that work for you guys and I think that's just so 
brilliant and so loving on her part to add those details like you said like the unseen kitchenette the unseen bathroom which I want to see behind the scenes photos of <laughs> to like yeah just flesh it out and make it feel like a real space for you it's just incredible and it's I think you see a couple of times the street where Madeline lives and every shop was furnished and every shop was thought out and it was just different colors, different shades. And when I walked into these streets, cause I'd seen them, I think a couple of months earlier, uh -huh. uh, we had a, an amazing tour and we, we also met the builders <laughs> and they took Polaroids of us cause we asked for them and then we were like, oh, come into Polaroid. And there's just one guy who dared. <laughs> we just two in the Polaroid, but the guy that we don't know but was really cute and kind. <laughs> And it was, it was really, really funny. And then coming back a couple of months later, you know, with the paved streets. And actually, it's 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 incredible how she seized Paris because I never thought for a second that this was like, yeah, kind of a copy. It just really felt unique. And the colors and the way that you've got the gas coming out and, and, and the inscriptions, everything. She's just historically so precise that it makes a lot of fun to even just be around her because you're like, what am I gonna discover how she does this yeah you find all the little details hidden along the way <laughs> yeah yeah and it's, it's like opening boxes of presents and I used to do that when I was a kid I, I used to love boxes and I just stuff a lot of thing in there and maybe write something and then I just throw it somewhere and then all of a sudden years later I come out and I pop them open and I'm just like <gasps> I don't remember why I did that but I did it you know and I like, I love just... that. It's like a little what are what are those called? The time capsule for yourself. Exactly. And I kind of always did that for me. And when I worked on set with Mara's work, it was like more little presents, you know. I didn't know where she put them, but I, I just got the book. opening all the yeah. drawers and everything. <laughs> yes, and they were always full. I, I mean... know, right? It's amazing. Uh. Like it's who would have thought of that? It brings me so much joy, but when she does it and she doesn't tell you and you kind of have to figure it out, it's just, it makes me really like happy to be on set. Yeah, a little fairy godmother there giving little presents. <laughs> so you kind of mentioned too, like with adding uh, books and everything uh, to the set and stuff. Um, so obviously with the character of Madeleine, we've tweaked her for the show she's not a doll maker anymore she has this very kind of rich historical background with you know her family that's died of tb and everything and then uh her relationship with this german soldier and horizontal collaboration is are you a researcher generally when it comes to roles do you dive into that history or do you normally just allow for like the script to inform your performance no <laughs> yeah no, no, no. i think Every time it's historical, and I've done a lot of historical stuff, um, and so I have to take all the books back down because, I mean, what we learned at school is just a fraction of what happened, and these moments are so specific. It's about a French woman who is having sex with a German officer, soldier, whatever he is, and, I mean, the dimension is completely different. Life in Paris at that time was just devastating, and I think she got a lot out of it. Uh, and so all the research is kind of make you realize what's the relationship towards the soldier. Because I could have come up with something, but I'm not going to come up in every movie with something new. It's, it's not possible. And when you kind of yeah. reach into history, you grab little bits and pieces. And what we always said with Roland was like, well, you know, she doesn't hate him. He's just, uh, he's just, you know, there's nothing here. She doesn't have a family. She probably doesn't have a lover. She doesn't have anyone. Men disappeared, she probably didn't have friends, and all of a sudden there's this German soldier standing here and being like, Oh hi, <laughs> would you yeah. would you be uh, kind to give me a bit of warmth? And I mean, you say no a couple of times until you're like, ah, that's great, I come around. And it's just it's it was really interesting how we never really put words on whatever happened to her before. Mm -hmm. But we kind of paved it out for you guys to see that there was a lot. And I think it's really interesting. Roland was also saying the love that she had for her little sister. 
the parents that weren't really there and then all of a sudden everything crumbles down and at the same time the flashbacks are here for you to see what happened to her and to not I don't know if it's really important that we know everything you know I I really yeah. like yeah being able I to like fill in the you gaps know. yourself yeah exactly you fill it in with whatever you feel like and I think it's always interesting to not justify characters to be like okay they're uh, socially incapable and they're grumpy and uh, they're terrible. <laughs> but this happened. And now you figure it out. Or you give them yeah. a sort of pat on the back and say, yeah, it's fine, mate. Or well, it's not. But yeah, that's your choice. Yeah. And I mean, because I mean, I think a lot of times people do have a tendency to want to like try to uh, be like, well, this character like you said, it's justified because of this. And that means that they're good and it's okay to root for them. And that's just not how people are in real life. People do have these foibles and things that color their lives in different ways. And you have to make that decision of not necessarily if the person is good or justified, but if you can over, you know, how that person and that, or that character makes you feel and what their role in the story is in general, which I, I think this show does such a good, oh, such a good job of just showing these people who, like I said, don't fit in any one category of like goodness or evil or morality. It, it's such a question of morality, everything in this show. Well, that's what I love about like Sam's character because he's 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 so for me he's not even bad, you know, because I don't see characters in a bad or a good light. I'm like the more goodness I see in someone, I'm like, yeah, this just bores the hell out of me because yes. I need to, you know, I'm not <laughs> day I need to like see someone that makes a terrible mistake, and I'm like. <gasps> Oh, I get that. <laughs> yeah. You you know? And there's sort of all them, the cracks and failures and 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 the way of breaching them. I mean, you know, this sort of it's it's for me when I watched the first app and it was, you know, the last scene with Delaney and Jacob, and it's like it's you and me, it's me and you. God, that always gives me the shivers. <gasps> oh. And there's Sam right next to there, and it's like, well, yeah, because that's how it is. Yeah. You say something and, and there's this thing that's here and this is alive and this will never die. And I think it's such a, it's such an amazing story and we, we can't get bored of it because it's so rich and it's it's so real. It's like we are. Really? Yeah. I mean, with my videos and everything, I and, you know, because I do reaction videos and stuff like that. So I'm watching these episodes. Hey, I watch them for my reaction. I watch them all the way through before my interviews. And then while I'm editing, I mean, I probably see them like 10 times through during the edit process. And I still get to the end of it. And Sunday comes around and I'm back on my couch watching the episode again. Because, yeah, I just I cannot get bored of it each time I pick out something new or like just the emotions hit every time, which is just amazing. I kind of wanted to like go back in time just a little bit, you know, for Madeline and everything like that, and kind of talked about that initial meeting that she has with Claudia. I mean, it's a pretty tense first meeting. You don't necessarily get the feeling that these guys are gonna end up <laughs> trying to live an immortal life together. Um, but you see, you know, at the end of that meeting, Madeline softened a little bit more. And then episode four, she tells Claudia, well, you know, I actually liked you. Uh, what, what was it about Claudia, despite the friction that kind of jumped out for Madeline? Well, to be honest with you, I think that's maybe a very French thing. Uh, the friction makes you realize who you've got standing in front of you. Mm -hmm. Um, very... Talking um, about that texture again. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely, because I think, you know, and I recently met an actor, and he's really grumpy and everything, and he just, blah, 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 blah. and he was surrounded by German actors, and it was really, really funny, because, you know, he just, he just pops out, and you're like, hey, buddy, what's wrong with you? But there's nothing wrong with him. It's just, he's, he's in this space, and I think it's the same thing with Madeline. They are both in this space where, um... Why, why should she open up? Sorry, who are you? 
you're just going to come into my life. You want something from me. Uh, uh-huh. I don't really want to do this for you. Uh, yes, it's money, but I can live off art, whatever. <laughs> and you're American. You've got no style. It's talking like Madeleine. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, and, <laughs> and you're a new kid to be outside in the dead of night uh, and, and be so freaking arrogant. And she talks back and she says things that resonates with Madeline. Like, well, life has never been that kind to me. I mean, you gotta, you got to live through a lot of hard things, first of all, to admit it to yourself and then to admit it to someone else. And there's this sort of recognition of the same soul, this sort of young body with a really old soul in it. And, and mm-hmm. it just clicks. And when you're used to people or... Um, harassing you back because you've been so unkind to them or just stepping away because they don't want to deal with you when someone actually is in your face and is like I want this and you're going to do that for me and I've got star because I want these gloves with it ha! and Boom. I think yeah exactly and there's this sort of pride of recognition oh my god she's like me and oh, okay she okay okay and she pays so what am I going to do about it exactly and I think it's it's really rare when someone steps out of their comfort zones or is like, no, I see you, you're hot like I am, and we're going to be fine, and I see you, so stop pretending. And there's something really beautiful in the way that Roland wrote it, um, in the sense that, yeah, the first scene is not a, a typical <laughs> meeting. Rom-com meeting. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, and that's thrilling. And every scene after that, like, for example, what are the odds that they meet again and what are the odds that uh, Claudia recognizes her and and just the banter between the two is something that is really exciting as well it's like you know you never know how far you can go and maybe she she was a bit too intense and so she makes it up by coming to that show and hating it throughout and, and being honest about it which is dreadful I mean that we all go to shows and, and we've got our friends in there or we've got someone that we know that is in there. And we're like, yeah, 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 the, the, the scenery was amazing. Wow, what, what yeah, how much Those I- costumes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to think that she doesn't even pretend. And I think it's first these people that are socially absolutely incapable of going with the flow and they lose way less time with with friendliness and kindness and roundness and I think it's really really interesting when you've got two people that are on the same length um, mm-hmm. to sort of end it, and they're like yeah well you know your French is not as bad as the you're fine it was dreadful but I'm not going to say it and yeah it's- <laughs> even for us as actors to like you know have the undersaults and be like oh, that was terrible dreadful. thank you so much for saying that 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 your French was awful because the play was worse <laughs> and it's sort of everything that's below the surface is what makes me love acting and love my job when I can do it Gotcha. I love that um do you think after that theater performance when Claudia gives her a ride home um, was she prim and proper and have Madeleine in the sidecar or were they, you know, buddied up on one bike? <laughs> I, I I would wish for one bike. And that's all I can say. I don't know, but I would wish for one bike. Because... I'm saying one bike too. Yeah. Okay, good. good. Yeah. We're on the same page. We're making this official. They were on the same bike together. One bike. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad um, we can have it. It's exactly um so i mean yeah they have like this kind of rough start and everything but i kind of what you were talking about um with their kind of like okay well how far can i push what should i give here i love how they kind of seek each other out there's not necessarily one pursuer they each are at their own different times going after each other and honestly the relationship between the two of them develops with so much tenderness and love I I love it and you know what's it like to be a part of the only healthy relationship on the show <laughs> it, was really nice. it was just you know it was so special because um the second part of this discovery of the girls where uh Madeline is fitting a dress for Claudia 
it was a rather longer scene and we kind of shot it in two times um and it was really really nice how you know Madeleine, who you would think would never reveal herself, kind of, you know, drops the armor and there's no pathos about her. She's not a victim at all. She's always going to be straight and she knows what she did. She knows there would be consequences and they're coming for her. Mm -hmm. But I, I really like the way that it's like, well, that, that's my life. That's my take it or leave it. And then Claudia opens up and she reveals a lot about herself as well and, and all her vulnerability. And I think it's really, it's beautiful how both of them are able to, as you say, banter and then let the other one uh, kind of push and also listen, you know, step back, listen, take it in, be that for the other person. And I think, yeah, it's just, oh, it breaks my heart every time, doesn't it? <laughs> You're not going to get to the heartbreak yet. episode. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so too, I mean, for so in this episode specifically, episode six, I mean, because uh, I think the biggest arc for this episode is obviously Claudia and Madeline's, you know, relationship developing, and then also like Louis's relationship to Claudia and its dissolvent uh, developing. But kind of what kickstarts, I mean, the deepening of their relationship is this, you know, terrible attack against Madeline. And it, it plays out almost like a three minute horror short film where the monster changes halfway through. It starts off with obviously the monsters, the people attacking her, and then suddenly lights flicker, doors are being bashed into skulls and there's scissors through the throat. Um, but it kind of, Madeline comes out, she sees Claudia for what she really is and doesn't shy away kind of how you were talking about Claudia seeing her now Madeline really sees Claudia and I guess can you walk me through like the construction of the scene that you talked about with you know Delaney and the director Emma Freeman about creating this harrowing yet ultimately connective scene because this is the catalyst for what Claudia is like this girl's got something I think this is the lady for me um, so we were really fortunate because we shot, I think, a couple of days in this environment. Um, and Emma is just, gosh, I got a kind of girl fan over her because she's just epic. She comes on set every day with this amazing energy and she's got this huge smile stuck on her face and she really means it and she's like okay so today we're going to do this and that and you're like already excited just watching her be excited about what you're going to be able to do and she's like she's the last one standing she's going to fight through every scene and she's got this sort of extremely generous and and intelligent way of thinking through scenes and she's always going to give you um you know, the possibility to do something. And she always knows what she's going to do in, a, in in the scenes. And so we didn't really prep. We just worked it through in rehearsals with um, the other actors and with the stunt guy that was also an actor in it, which was really, really helpful because he just, you know, he, he pushes you around and you don't have bruises. So I had like one arm unbruised and the other one <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, you know, it's just you're so in it that you're supposed to not really give any power back. But I do. But, you know, it's just because you're so in the scene. That you exactly. Yeah. 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 It It is quite a visceral scene. And so but for me, I mean, I remember Emma coming up to me a couple of times and being like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, no, why? And I mean, you know, it's just scene. It's my job. I'm fine with it. Yeah. You know, it's not like. I think I was thinking about it recently. I think intimacy scene can be way more um, uncomfortable than than violence scenes because in the violence you still yell and and you shout and you move and and you've got the freedom of doing so. So we just kind of trickled down and we cut it in two parts. The whole part where uh, Madeline's being attacked, how we were going to shoot it until the bed, and. Um, and yeah, and then it was uh, Delaney coming in and it was really, really nice because, you know, after the rush of of the adrenaline of, of realizing, oh, I just avoided being raped miraculously and all of a sudden there are dead bodies all over the freaking place and my neck. Yeah. 
And yeah. she was from the start, Emma was was like, We're gonna shoot it on your face. We wanna see a reaction on you. And I was like, Oh, I didn't think we were gonna do it that way. <laughs> You know, like, great, the pressure is building. Yep. <laughs> and it was kind of like, you know, the thing where I'm like going to bounce into a serial killer and all of a sudden it's that person that she really likes. And there's something in the brain that's like, oh, this is a, yeah, this this is a vampire. Okay, okay. Yeah, I can, I can, I can live with it. And it's fine. But until we get to that realization, it's, it's way afterwards. But it was really, really nice because, Delaney just played it in soft, such a soft way, you know? So soft. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And she just nailed it, you know? And I didn't have to do much. It was just like, you know, being pampered by someone. And it's it, it with Delaney, it's always been such an easy and nice treat. And she's just powered through it. I don't, I mean, I admire her for, you know, she comes into a second season. She has to incarnate a character that already exists and she just powered through that in such an elegant way and she never complained and she was always you know going with the instinct and I think it was just so refreshing to watch her and I was like I'm gonna go on instinct as well because I mean what do you want me to do you know and and it was just really really fascinating she's got this sort of aura she's just got that presence and you just watch her and you're like okay wow I know, and she's, she does such a good job, too, of, like, you know, embodying that kind of, obviously, the kind of childlike essence there that's within Claudia, but then at these moments, especially, like, I'm thinking about the, you know, argument that she had in episode four with Louis, where it's, yeah. like, such, I mean, I see a woman who's lived through decades and decades of just irritation and pain coming out from her, and I'm, like, how are you pulling this out? I know, I know. And it's so interesting because she variates through all these episodes and there's so many colors to her. And she's just, she's just genuinely just so kind and so, so prepared and so, so willing, you know. I, I remember that scene that we were talking about and uh, the girl had these scissors planted in her neck and the blood was dripping. And mm-hmm. every time you was something a bit gory, Delaney was like, <laughs> my eyes pop and she's like she's and so was- me I love I love the gore I love the draw I was gonna ask how they is that how did they make that look so good what is that <laughs> Tammy I don't know if you know her but if you don't know her Google her up she's just Tammy is just epic she did everything uh as a fix that you see visually and then the visual effects come on top, but she, like, it was basically it. She did all the job. It was um, a sort of a scissors that had been cut into and then stuck. And it was like a really artful uh, decoration of, of, you know, putting a new skin on, being able to cut it open and the blood seeping out. And it was just, it was really, really nice because the girl that had to do it had like tons of blood in her mouth at the beginning of the shot. And then we came on to her and then she had to like kind of vomit it out at the right time. Yeah. And I think it's really not the, the nicest sensation. And she just powered through it. And it was really, it was, it was like when I saw it finished, I was like, it's just, it's really uncomfortable, you know, and all the blood <laughs> everywhere. And you see, like, the joy that Tammy has when working, and it makes everyone really excited. And I remember when I, I, I met the Coven for the first time, they all had their beautiful lenses in, and uh-huh. anyone you see with their lenses, you've got this sort of, you kind of stare into their eyes, and there's something very magnetic about it. And when I had them on, you know, you just... I, I wear lenses, so it, it doesn't really change much. It just change, changes your peripheral vision, but that's it. Yeah. So you kind of feel a bit more dizzy and a bit more mysterious just because you can't see much. <laughs> but it's, it, it's just the lenses to be honest with you. And that was really, it was a really nice time to be able to like pop the lenses in and be like, I'm a vampire now. I am a vampire now. I do have to ask you, though. Okay, so uh, you, Roxanne, if you found out that, like, your best friend or partner, whoever, was a vampire, do you feel like you would be cool with that? Or would you be running for the hills? 
I mean, if it was my partner, I'd be running for the hills if I ever wanted to leave. <laughs> You're like, I've been looking for a way out. <laughs> uh, yeah, from the right way. Um, be friends. But no, a friend, no, them. Pretty decent. I mean, yeah, you just have to change the times that you see that person, but. What cryptid creature do you feel like would be the best the best friend to hang out with? Like, are we thinking werewolf? We thinking Sasquatch? We think of vampires? Oh, witches are pretty cool. Witches are ah, oh, and they can like they can they're they're helpful, you know. If you got someone who's messing with you, they cast a spell, you know. Maybe you're running late. They like give you a ride to work on their broom. Oh. It'd be a handy friend to have. It would be amazing. They do whatever you, not whatever you want to, but it's just, you know, there's this sort of, yeah, it's cool. Who could say that? Yeah. They have like, they're super, they're like super, they're like superheroes a little bit. You yeah. know, their little powers. Yeah, definitely. Would you, what superpower would you have if you could pick one? Oh, flying. Go to him. Flying. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Do you yeah. think, would you, would you be flapping wings or do you think you would just like rise like <laughs> the vampires? Rise like a vampire, like Ben always. Yes. Oh, Ben. <laughs> oh, he's amazing. Gosh, we, I think we all, we all fell for him. The, 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 him on stage, you just watch him and you're like, okay, right. Okay. Yeah. It's just constant, constant joy coming at you and he also has such a joy acting out and that's that's brilliant because you know most people know their thing and they just deliver and then that's it but he's got he's tweaking he's trying he's and he really goes with the audience I, don't, I remember sometimes you know repeating lines and everything and he'd just go sorry come again and it was just it was it was brilliant <laughs> every when he didn't hear the lines or when when something was not did going exactly after plan it was just he would be brilliant it's just he's epic he's brilliant to him. yeah i have to say everybody on this show does a pretty okay job yeah we're pretty lucky to have each other and i mean you know i think that it's all down to production and roland in the end because they chose how to put us all together and yeah it's I mean, when you when I first met Jacob and Sam, they're just the kindest souls and they really, really take care of each other and of everyone around. I mean, I've never been asked by a lead if, if the lenses were okay or if, if the dress was too tight or if I if I wasn't getting cold. And I'm like, oh, it's just, I, I had the impression of having a bigger brother around here. And it's just, he's like that with everyone and he puts everyone in front of him. And it's just so bloody generous and, he creates an atmosphere where you're all on the same level and it's really rare and when it happens it's just it's just great and, and Jacob and Sam really have that sort of really beautiful friendship and you see them and they've got a huge joy being around each other and also being yeah. around everyone else and it just kind of you know it trickles down and then everyone's like yeah yeah everyone's happy and, and we're all doing this together and I mean, and I think, that, I mean, the joy definitely comes across, A, with performances. Because I mean, I feel like you could, it allows you to, uh, I mean, not have that kind of extra level of stress to be like, how am I doing compared to everybody else? And then also production. Obviously, if you feel like you're in a positive environment, you're going to be doing better. And then that trickles down to fans, too. And it's something that, I don't know, that work we can see and we can appreciate and it just makes the viewing experience all the richer knowing just all the great things that we've heard behind the scenes about how the show is run and everything like that so it's just always so pleasant to hear when I met Delaney it was just super organic you know she doesn't she doesn't fuss around she's like oh hi and, and that's it you know basically we just connected and and you know she's very playful whenever she works so it's really interesting to see what road she's going to take and doing that I'm doing this and, I'm that. and it uh -huh. was just we kind of figured scenes out pretty quickly um and it was it was just a relief and to be honest with you I you know you do a casting and then you're on set and you've got the costumes and you've got the makeup and the hair and they all change you 
And the first scene that I had with Delaney was, I think, the one that we shot outside of the Théâtre des Vampires when they they had their little dialogue. Mm-hmm. And it was with them shooting that. And I remember he was pushing and pushing and pushing. He was like, no, that's not it. I wanted to be like, you know, ah, ah. And was, <laughs> I had to start with Levin, who's, who's no, and he's a huge fan of, of Interview with the Vampire. Yeah. Who's been on the first season, you know, and he kind of he kind of gave me the stamp and he was like, Okay, we found Madeline. And he really like he really made change a lot and do things very differently from what I had envisioned. And that was really interesting because we kind of dropped the role and I was so grateful to him because he kind of kicked launched me into this sort of big adventure. And then Emma came along and, and brought all these really, you know amazing ideas and and settled it down and and we really it was great to change because it felt like the before was the girls getting to know each other and then all of a sudden when it becomes something when it blossoms into something yes then there was emma who's got another vision about the role and it was it's just really really interesting how everyone kind of connects and collides and how whatever Levin brought me for the first few apps came along with me and it transformed into something else and it's like all these little layers that that work to bring a whole end picture are really interesting yeah and I think something very interesting for like your character specifically is that for you know a lot of your scenes or at least pretty much all of your scenes up to this point at least um you're kind of just dealing these one-on-one scenes you know either between you and Claudia or like maybe you Claudia and Louis or you and Armand is that something that you kind of relished being able to have these one-on-one scenes or did you ever feel like ah man just throw me in with a bunch more people and I can just be in the background well I I can't spoil anything so I'm not going to say anything about the rest yeah but yeah um, being able to I didn't have a lot of scenes with Jacob and I was really excited about them and when we got them it's also you know I'm kind of in the background as well you know I'm just watching them act and it was really really interesting to see Delaney and and Jacob they've known each other like you know you feel like it's brother sister relationship they're like so close and, and they're so we trust each other so much. So that was really interesting as well. But the one-on-one scene, I mean, you know, it's just ping pong all the time. It's like, where are you going? What are you doing? And it's it's sort of, I think I always took acting like a game. You prep as much as you want, historically speaking, concerning the role. But what yeah. I really think is when I've got someone in front of me and he's going to be like, ha I'm going to show you what I got. And, exactly. and, and just- responding. Yeah, exactly. And with the start, it was really interesting because we didn't know each other. Uh-huh. We went for dinner just a day before and we kind of paved it out in, in it just saying, you know, character comes from here, blah, blah, blah. How's it been on set? How's your life? Blah, blah, blah. But just very, very basic. And then we went in and rehearsals, you know, were like kind of, yeah, you know, we're heading there, but we weren't there yet. And and then camera turns on and Assad just swells around and he did something and I was like, that was amazing. And there's this sort of joy, I think, that we can also have between, I don't want to say us theatre actors, but when you've been on stage, and Delaney has that as well, there's a sort of, we're going for this ride wherever yeah. it takes us. And, and Assad and I have this, it, it's quite a long scene and we all we always shot it in one. Um, oh wow and it, yeah and it really felt like you know you start the scene on one foot and you've got to finish it whatever you've committed to and it was really interesting because he he's got a really good aura and he's got a strong aura and the whole thing of picking the apple I remember in rehearsal when he did it the first time I think that's when I completely fell in love with his acting it's just because it was so brilliant and he just took that apple from me. I sw- I was swearing when he took it away. And I said something awful. And then you had everyone looking like Emma and Hannah. And they were laughing so much. <laughs> it really is a power move. I mean, Roland came up with this brilliant idea of Madeleine scraping the apple. Because he'd seen someone at the airport doing it. And it's just brilliant. And he was like, so you're not going to eat the apple? Okay. And so he was like, you're going to take a spoon and you're going to scrape it. And I was like, 
okay. And I didn't get more information, so I knew that I was going to figure out how to eat so, you know, That's so days. funny because like while I was watching that scene, it stood out so much to me. I was like, why the fuck is she eating that apple? <laughs> I'm making Roland happy, I'm sure. I'm sure he's basking. He's basking. No, but and it's really interesting because you know, I you know, you read the scene and it wasn't one of my favorites. And then when we shot it, it was just you know, working with the start was just so different from everything that I've been through in the whole season you know so it was it was really there was something it just clicked you know some days it clicks and maybe he didn't tell you but on the same day we had uh, a mini hurricane sort of what yeah we had a mini hurricane so we had to exit the studio because these were the studios constructed outside so we had to leave set for an hour or two we waited we shot it and he had to shoot again all his big moments the wow. next day. And he was on top. He was so brilliant. It was like the next morning, it was like we just cut and we came in back to it. And it's just, that's how fascinating he is. He's just, he really gets it. You know, he's the camera's on and he's like, ah. Yeah, just there. So, and, I th and I think that's such a brilliant scene too I love how it, it's kind of like this interrogation and you know Armand really comes in with this idea or at least to me it came across that like oh yeah I'm not gonna like turn this girl into a vampire but I'm gonna break her down to where Louis can, and Claudia can be like oh yeah well obviously you can see why I wouldn't do that and she fights back and she meets him and she's very like nonchalant and dismissive <laughs> of him and I don't know for me it's almost like she's kind of sticking up to him in a way that Claudia can't due to her position in the coven you know because uh, she's heard all about this guy who made her walk around in this baby Lulu dress all this time and she just had to deal with it and she's like you know what I see what you're trying to do and I'm not having any of it <laughs> That was, you know, that's the joy, the utter joy of Roland and Hannah's writing is that she's never a victim. And even when this seems to be an interrogation scene, you're like, who's, who's, who's answering who right now? You know, there's a sort of very interesting swap. And I think that's my favorite scene because we didn't know how the relationship between these two was going to kind of become. Mm -hmm. And we were making the rules as we were going. And it was kind of really exciting to see, you know, Armand, quand même, it's just very strong and very, very composed and very everything. And he's kind of being led into this new world. And, and, and it was it was just so playful. It was just, I think I had as much joy, but I had so much joy shooting episodes. I really had. It's been such an amazing ride to be able to you know be one day have my head shaved off and be <laughs> crying uh, in the gutter and then the next day um being transformed into a vampire and i have two lovely people like sucking at my neck <laughs> nice double hickey afterwards <laughs> tell you because we now with the whole We've got an intimacy coordinator, and I didn't know that she was going to be around for everything that was going to be, you know, vampire stuff. And so when uh, it was said that Jacob would be by my neck and then Delaney on the other, you know, all of a sudden it turned into something really erotic because, you know, you, you, I wasn't thinking at all like that. But when someone says the lips are going to touch your neck, and there was a sort of really weirdness about it, and <laughs> I had to breathe really, really hard. And the two had fits of laughter because I was like, <laughs> and they were just giggling by my side. And I think I cracked up so many times and bless them, they stuck around. But it was, it was just hilarious because you think it's like this sort of transformation. But the, behind the scenes, I had like drool coming down my neck. <laughs> so sexy. <laughs> good memories and just laughing about it you know it's just it was so 
friendly and, and so nonplussed all of this thing that, that when I see the scene, I remember the back side of it. Mm-hmm. And then I see it and I'm amazed by how powerful it, it, it is. Well, yeah, because that's always something like, I love that scene. I mean, just like the nervousness of being turned into a vampire and the again, going back to the tenderness between Madeline and Claudia and her guiding her through it. And then, yeah, Madeline being like, I want you to do it. And I'm like, oh, okay. (laughs) And yeah, it's very intimate and it's very like kind of erotic and everything. But then, yeah, I have the thought in the back of my mind. I'm always like, what is it like actually like though, whenever they're doing the biting scenes and just like hanging out mouth on the throat? (laughs) No, we're not allowed to because of the intimacy. Like the closest that you get is like actually touching, but they only touch if it's visible from one camera angle. And most of the time it wasn't, but you kind of have to like do that. And that's why the drills. But it's, I mean, it's fine, you know, it's just very funny moments. And thank God we had these moments where we could just make fun of ourselves because you need that in a show that is so intense. And yeah. and, and what was amazing is that you see and you're like, oh, trauma, trauma, trauma. But at the back, we are just having a very nice time. <laughs> <laughs> love that. You have to have the levity. You have to have the, you know, light and the dark, the black and the white, the yin and the yang. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. When we get to the end of the episode, we have this lovely scene at the cafe where everybody's catching up, having a good time. Things are great. Louis found what he wants. Claudia's found what she wants. And um, it all just goes to shit. Why? Why did that need to happen, Roxanne? Why did that need to happen? Well, you know, we, we kind of needed Sam back. You know, oh, you're not going to contradict me on that one, are you? I'm not. <laughs> no, no, you got me there. <laughs> Radio <laughs> silence from Autumn. <laughs> you know, that's what's so nice. And I think that's what was going through my mind um, for the next episode. But I'm, I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything. But it was like, you know, there was this joy. They had this amazing time. They connected. They found each other. What were the odds, you know, two broken souls and two souls that reconnect and rekindle and make the other one whole again, you know, that's mm. really, really special to have. So they had this. You can't say we didn't give you the joy. You know what? You're right. So I'm going to take I'm going to take what you guys have given us. I'm going to put it in my pocket. I'm going to carry it above my heart through the next episode. I think you'll need it. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> you'll need a little bit. Well, you know, okay, so here's how here's what I'm thinking is going to happen in the next episode. You can tell me how close I get, okay? So okay. obviously we're having this trial here. Uh we have all of our beloveds on the stage you know, bound up and everything. Um, but I'm thinking Santiago comes sashaying up to the front of the stage, you know, twirling around. Um, but what's this? Somebody left the woodcutter scythe out on the stage. He trips, he falls off with his head, diva down. All the rest of the other vampires panic and scatter because their new leader's gone. And then Claudia and Madeline run off into the sunset happily ever after. I think that's that's a really good version. Actually. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what happens, right? That is probably I can't spoil anything. So it could happen. It could, you know, up to Saturday eight p.m. Everything can happen. Anything everything can happen. happen. So this is this is definitely a viable option that we're throwing out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's and we we like. We might be reshooting things if, if some really, really good uh, variations come up. I'm just saying. Okay. Okay. Come All right. Really good stuff, and we'll shoot it again. Okay. <laughs> in one <laughs> week, and uh, throw it in there for the airtime. <laughs> I've got Your my cell phone. Up. Call me up. I'll just, like, you know, throw something together yeah, really quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, can you, can you offer any words of encouragement to uh, us trembling fans out there as we as we prepare for what's to come 
<laughs> You're like, no. <laughs> it's le théâtre des vampires. So go with the play. There we go. Go with the and play. And there's man who's the master of the ceremony. So what could go wrong? Nothing. Yeah. I get they're just gonna like slap on the wrist and then let them all go off. Make a great show out of it. Big ending. <laughs> um, um <laughs> We'll leave this on a high note and maybe we might have, I mean, you kind of talked about how much you enjoyed uh, filming the kind of interrogation scene with Armand, but I guess, um, what was that your favorite day on set? What was your favorite day on set that you would say? Uh, a twisted part of me is going to say the shaving day was amazing. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, what, cause I mean, I, I was, had... I'm, I'm always curious, like, what's it like to like have to put yourself in such a emotional state for like a, five second clip or so i wasn't oh yeah right that part um i think you know it's just a habit it's a muscle it's like crying at some point you just click in and it was quite violent because there were a lot of people shouting at me and the guys brusking me and i love my hair and they were cutting so i had a bald cap on which basically means all your hair are being tugged under um, the wig and the wig was being cut but just the sensation is as though your own hair were being cut uh -huh. and it was just it was really interesting because you go through a lot of things and through the research it just built me up you don't really have to think about anything you just know how it was and it was a really terrifying time like the ones that we have right now in France but let us not talk about that um and <laughs> it was it was, you know, you get into that scene and I think I was just, I was really, really glad that we got so much out of this five second flashback because technically the flashback is always Madeline's point of view and and they kind of twisted it for this scene. So they must have been happy about what they saw. Um, but I think the coolest shot that we did was then the ending through the glass and when you see her and she's yes. got no more and there was this sort of, I remember I was watching myself in this sort of tainted mirror and I was like, power through it. They're not going to get you. They're not going to get you. You know, just keep, don't play the, 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 you know, the utter humiliation and someone disintegrating. It's someone that's already fighting back. And I thought that was really interesting to shoot this scene because once you've shot it, you know what kind of fighter she is. And it just kind of piled up to, yeah, it's it's just amazing how many how many different vibes I got to wiggle through and how Roland just trusted me with all of that. And he was like, yeah, let's let us do something like that. And then, then let's sprinkle some of this here. And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's, and it's, you know, in this environment, people that are so passionate about the project, that are really committed with so many special effects and so many people that are excited just to start the day. I mean, what what more could you ask for? Yeah, honestly. What can I say? I'm a broken record. It's a brilliant show. Best <laughs> show out there right now. And people who aren't watching it, I just, I don't understand what's wrong with them. I really don't. It's coming. The time is coming. And then I mean, and then you've got the amazing people around, like fans and everything. And it's truly, really, I mean, the kindness that you showed and the support and like, I got the impression like you're 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 lots of little I don't want to say it in a mean way but lots of little ants and you're just you know carrying the words out and you're just so dedicated and it's just heartwarming when you've got people like that around it's just it's really really nice as well well thank you <laughs> <laughs> um I do I really quick I had one more question because I think for me and I'm sure a lot of people are because I mean you're you are French correct yes yes but I was shocked to hear your speaking voice like your normal speaking voice for the very first time um you're kind of so for the show you know you're putting on putting on a French accent do you feel a lot of like intense pressure of like okay every the other people doing French accents they aren't French so if they get a little bit wrong it's because they're not French but for me if I get this wrong oh god I never thought about it that way oh <laughs> sorry then don't no. think about that don't think about that no but you know I'm, I'm pretty bad at doing a French accent because I mean you know I don't 
hear it very often and and I kind of inspired myself from Assad's work and I was really astonished I mean I have to give it to all of them Delaney is just epic in foreign languages like the Romanian that she threw out was really really good and the French is like really really good and I mean they just learned it phonetically but yeah, I just, you know, Roland asked for me to add a lot of Frenchness to it. And I was like, would you mind if I take the accent a bit down and then I just add oui et uh, ah, bien sûr, and stuff that is very French, like little bits and pieces where, for example, um, the whole monologue, uh, the, not the monologue, but the, the scene with Assad, um, I added like bits and pieces where I call him uh, I don't remember what I said, but it was like, it was in French. And so every time when I had the possibility, I just, yeah, diluted a bit of French in there. And and I don't know if I've been very uh, good at keeping the accent the same way throughout. And I think it kind of slips when I'm with Delaney because I just listen to her and I'm terrible because I mimic. And like, I think I've spent now more than an hour trying not to re reciprocate your American accent because... <laughs> I just, my, my original accent is American, but I was in a show and they were like, oh, you got to do the British accent. And it was, I was still young and I didn't know that coaches were available out there. And uh -huh. I just watched Hugh Grant movies. And when I was auditioning for it, I thought, Hugh Grant, Hugh Grant, Hugh Grant. And then the first the accent that was the most complicated for me to learn. So I just stick to that. But when I'm around American. I just flip back into the American, but you know, for my PRs, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for the British for for now. You know, I just, I just need a personality so people don't get too confused. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, love, I love that. Can I do a similar thing? Like with um, anytime I travel anywhere. I find it really hard not to automatically just start trying to mimic the accents that I hear around me. And I'm like, they're going to think that you're making fun of them. Like, stop it. I have exactly the thing. I went last time for dinner with a friend who's an Italian. And then I kind of, you know, I always try to order in the best Italian accent that I managed. It was a really long sentence. And I was like, um, je vais prendre le, um, catch it. And I, I look at him, I look up to him, and I see him, like, looking at me, what the f*** are you doing taking an Italian accent? And so the end of my sentence was purely French, so I massacred the And then when the waiter left, he was like, did you just order and pretend Italian? And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so I totally get that all the time. Like, I had an audition for an Irish role. And I just kept the Irish. The Irish is somewhere lurking at the back of my mind. And, and just, I mean, honestly, I should be talking to you like that because this is my normal accent. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> We're going to redo the entire interview. So, <laughs> hi, Roxanne. Thank you for coming today. <laughs> um, Really quick, because I love the fact, the little tidbit that you watched Hugh Grant movies. What's your favorite Hugh Grant movie? God, not again, Lauren. That's just the epic, epic. Bridget Jones is quite good, but yes. you know. I, I mean, could... Notting Hill. I'm just yeah. a girl standing in front of I... a boy. How can you not? Hugh Grant plus Julia Roberts. God, I love Julia so much. I think Pretty Woman is like the movie that I can watch on and on and on and on without stopping. That just. So America's sweetheart. Thank you so, so much for talking with me. I'm going to bid you adieu uh, with a nice little shot here. So this is to Roxanne Duran being shot through the heart by your character, Madeline, which we're really going to be shot through the heart <laughs> next episode. So, you know, let's, let's just deaden the pain a bit and uh, cheers. <laughs> I think cheers to that. Thank you so much for the lovely time. What a, it's been a blessing. Oh, thank you. Oh. Down in one. Yes, girl. That's what I'm talking about. Love, you said shot. I can't really. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a good one. Take care. Bye. <laughs> 
Okay. Go with me here, guys. A new band called The Daniels. <laughs> yeah. Both of like you together. It. Eric revisiting yes. his past. Luke I come out in, in a wheelchair. <laughs> I come out in a wheelchair with a little bib on for my How drawer. How punk would that be, though? I mean, who's doing that? <laughs> I like that. That's like I think we're onto something here. I could roll if you're in the if, yeah if you're in the wheelchair I can roll you in. <laughs> <laughs>